the gap, standing for Jesus. Standing in the gap for family and friends. Standing in the gap, one love for all, so we all can make it in. That brings us to a section of our uh, study that keeps us informed, keeps us informed about what's going on in the world today. See, God put us in this world, not to go on top of some mountain and and, um, and separate ourselves from the world. Like, you know, you see a lot of the, the priests and stuff sitting on a mountain and people cry, climbing the mountain to find out the truth and all that kind of stuff. God wants us in the valley. He wants us not on the mountain, down in the valley where it's all happening. And so um, we can't ignore what is happening in the world today. We've dedicated a portion of our uh, study. We call it the Gap News. And the Gap News will see how, what's going on, how we should respond. And uh, the person that's been in charge of that and doing such a great job uh, with that is Marvel, and she's got something for you. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> so I learned a new word this week, y'all. Kamala Phenomenon. You got to practice it a little bit before you can say it. The name of this Gap News is We Are Not Going Back. My fellow Americans, I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. In this sacred space, I'm surrounded by portraits of extraordinary American presidents. Thomas Jefferson, wrote the immortal words that guide this nation. George Washington showed us presidents are not kings. Abraham Lincoln who implored us to reject malice. Franklin Roosevelt who inspired us to reject fear. I revere this office, but I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think is more important than any title. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. But this sacred task of perfecting our union, it's not about me, it's about you, your families, your futures. It's about we the people. We can never forget that. And I never have. I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point. One of those rare moments in history when the decisions we make now will determine our fate of our nation and the world for decades to come. America's going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect, freedom, justice, and democracy? In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, or, but as, as fellow Americans. Can we do that? Does character in public life still matter? I believe I know the answer to these questions, because I know you, the American people. And I know this. We are a great nation because we are good people. When you elected me to this office, I promise to always level with you to tell you the truth. And the truth, the sacred cause of this country is larger than any one of us. And those of us who cherish that cause, cherish it so much, a cause of American democracy itself, must unite to protect it. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. I believe my record as president my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future, all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. Thank you. 
of all, thank you. Um, can we just give it up again for my husband? <laughs> Um, it is so good to hear our president's voice. Joe, I know you're still on the, on the call, and we've been talking every day. Um, you probably, you guys heard it from Doug's voice. We love Joe and Jill. We really do. They truly are like family to us. And we do, everybody here does. It's neutral. <laughs> I knew you were still there. You're not going anywhere, Joe. Oh, I'm watching you, kid. Oh, I'm watching you, kid. I love you. I love you, Joe. Thank you. And it is my great honor to have Joe's endorsement in this race. You sure do. And it is my intention to go out and earn this nomination and to win.
is true that by many indicators, our economy is the strongest in the world. But while inflation is down and wages are up, prices are still too high. You know it and I know it. And when we win this election, here's what we're going to do about it. On day one, I will take on price gouging and bring down costs. But Donald Trump has a different plan in mind, one that would raise prices on middle-class families. Just look at his Project 2025 agenda. I take it you've seen it. Project 2025 is a plan to weaken the middle class, be clear. And Donald Trump intends to cut Social Security and Medicare he intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to gut our investments in clean energy jobs. He intends to end the Affordable Care Act. To take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. You guys remember what that was? Children with asthma, breast cancer survivors, grandparents with diabetes. Georgia, America has tried these failed policies before, and we are not going back. And it is a fight for freedom. Across our nation, we are witnessing a full-on assault on hard-fought, hard-won freedoms and rights. The freedom to vote. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to live without fear of bigotry and hate. The freedom to love who you love openly and with pride. The freedom to learn and acknowledge our true and full history. And the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body. and for freedom. And I don't have to tell folks in Atlanta that generations of Americans before us led the fight for freedom. And now, the baton is in our hands. Each and every one of us. And we love our country. We love our country. And I believe it is the highest form of patriotism to fight for the ideals of our country. And so, we who believe in the sacred freedom to vote will finally pass the Freedom to Vote Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act.
reproductive freedom will stop Donald Trump's extreme abortion bans and when Congress passes a law to restore reproductive freedoms, as President of the United States, I will sign it into law. So November 5th, November 5th is in 98 days. And let's level set. Friends, let's level set. We have a fight in front of us. We have a fight in front of us. And we are the underdogs in this race. We are. But you see, this is a people-powered campaign. Ours is a people-powered campaign. In fact, after I announced my candidacy, we saw the best week of grassroots fundraising in presidential momentum in this race is shifting. And there are signs that Donald Trump is feeling it. You may have noticed. So last week, you may have seen, he pulled out of the debate in September he had previously agreed to. debate stage. Because as the saying goes, if you've got something to say, going to be easy. This is hard work, but we like hard work. Hard work is good work. So Georgia, today I ask you, are you ready to get to work? Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? We are not going back. We are not going back. We all here remember what those four years were like. And today, we were given yet another reminder. This afternoon, Donald Trump spoke at the annual meeting of the National Association of Black Journalists. And it was the same old show. 
the divisiveness, and the disrespect. And let me just say, the American people deserve better. The American people deserve better. The American people deserve a leader who tells the truth, a leader who does not respond with hostility and anger when confronted with the facts. We deserve a leader who understands that our differences do not divide us. They are an essential source of our strength. The one thing Kamala Harris has always been, fearless. As a prosecutor, she put murderers and abusers behind bars. As California's attorney general, she went after the big banks and won $20 billion for homeowners. And as vice president, she took on the big drug companies to cap the cost of insulin for seniors. Because Kamala Harris has always known who she represents. This campaign is about who we fight for. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. Where every senior can retire with dignity. But Donald Trump wants to take our country backward, to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations and end the Affordable Care Act. But we are not going back. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. The Kamala Phenomenon. Say that with me. So, <clears throat> since our last class, all of this has happened. We were off last week. Art had to go to a funeral. And since our last class, two weeks ago, Joe Biden stepped down from the uh, nomination. Um... And, oh, by the way, brought all of those Russian uh, refugee, not refugees, uh, uh, prisoners. prisoners, all the Rus Russian prisoners home. But he stepped down, Kamala Harris, uh, he endorsed her. There was a wave of endorsements, a wave in, of endorsements. But like she said, she wanted to earn it. She didn't want to have it just passed to her. And so she did earn it. She got all of the endorsements. She got um, the different delegates to say that they were going to support her. As of yesterday, in the delegate um, virtual count, she actually earned the nomination for the um, Democratic, um, to be the Democratic candidate for president. In one week, they raised over $200 million in grassroots donations. I saw that the percentage was something like 60% was women. Some 30% was first-time donors. They um, recruited almost 200,000 new volunteers and the um, final numbers for July, which for her was two weeks, was over $310 million in grassroots. That doesn't count um, the money that the uh, billionaires gave her and that uh, George Clooney gave her and that Melinda Gates gave her, uh, her campaign, I should say. Because we, we need to make sure that's not for Kamala, is for her campaign. But, honey, what do you think about the Kamala phenomenon? Well, you know, like I've always said, there's, um, I'm, not, I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I'm more independent than anything. There's another side to it, of course, and that's the Republican side. And we don't show that. And the reason, <clears throat> I mean, how do you show a side where they, they just lie? How do you show a side that uses insults and vulgarities and all that instead of trying to show you the truth? I would love to show another side of uh, of, of an issue because there are always two sides to to a, to an issue. Well, but when you're always always delving on the dark side, 
then I mean, there's, I'm not sure how you how you present that. And I think the way to present it is not to present it. Well, sweetie, I'm not sure that I agree with you on that because in the interest of uh, equal time, you know, we are not a political um, organization. We're a nonprofit. It was my plan to next week show what the Trump campaign is doing so that people know. You know, um, you can veto me, but I think people should know the Kamala phenomenon, and then they should also see the Trump and Vance uh, dumpster fire. Uh, what the, <laughs> the Kamala phenomenon. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens with Kamala. And, uh, uh, you know, may God bless her. And hopefully, um, you know, um, God puts in place, because I'm just a, a believer that God is in control and puts in place the person he wants in place that can deliver us from this uh, 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 problem that we have. So, that's all I want to say about it. Okay. All right. Well, then. <laughs>